Hi guys, it's Ty with Apocalyptic Gardening. Today is July 31st, 2021, and we have gotten some rain in uh, what seems like the first rain in months, because it is. Uh, we have been in a severe drought here in Utah, so thankfully we've started to get some rain. In this episode, I'm going to be going back almost a whole month uh, talking about squash bugs. I hate those things, and a new way that I found that's been pretty effective in removing them. I'm going to share that with you. And uh, also, we're going to show you the greenhouse and the yard. I'm going to show you the raspberry, blackberry plants and the peach and apple trees. So uh, let's get started. Okay, raise your hand if you have problems with squash bugs. Every year we have problems. We've tried all sorts of things to stop it. Matter of fact, if you look at the top of the leaves here, you see all this white stuff from here. That is supposed to keep the squash bugs off your plants doesn't work i think it helps but it doesn't work the, really the only way that we found to be effective is uh, every couple of days you got to be out here and i found the perfect leaf to show you the problem we've actually been winning this year and getting uh vegetables by using one simple trick so first i'm going to show you the perfect leaf because there's eggs and babies on there and then i'm going to show you how we do two different things to help keep the squash bugs from ruining our plants. Okay, so if you look under this leaf right here, you can see there's eggs up here and a whole slew of babies right there. That is no good. Normally, it'd be really hard to catch all those little babies, right? I've come up with a perfect solution to get rid of the babies quick. This guy right here. We are going to roast them off on that leaf. Really, that's the only thing I can think of because to try to catch them, they just all get away. So here we go. Okay, so that takes care of the babies. Now we use this little stick or anything you find, really. You can use your fingernails and we just scrape them off the leaf. And that's how we do it. Uh, that was one leaf, so now I'm gonna check the entire, well, I have a couple plants. So I'm gonna check all the plants and make sure there's no squash bugs on any of them. If I see large squash bugs, I catch them and put them in a jar. When I say we have to be out here often, I mean like pretty much every other day. I mean, it's crazy. You come out every other day, you will find eggs almost every single time. And if you do your job right, you get rewards like this one. These squash bugs can be so annoying. I'm just gonna show you, just notice some eggs right here in probably one of the worst locations. Right on that future flower. Okay, so this whole wider thing seems to be working great because I'm easily able to remove and kill the little squash bugs and it doesn't appear to be hurting the plant. So the question remains, <laughs> a, what are you doing? Animals always turn to ruin our videos. The question remains, am I a genius for using this or am I an idiot? I guess at the end of the year, we'll find out. Cat. So far, things seem to be going great. I was out here yesterday and I probably scraped off and killed, I'd say about 70 total squash bugs. So I'm just kind of curious about my lighter. I'm gonna see uh, if there's any new babies out here today. So in just seconds, I found one, and then uh, under another leaf, I found some new eggs. So <laughs> there you go. They are relentless. Okay, so the good news is there was only the one squash bug and only two batches of eggs. Uh, that being said, I got my diatomaceous earth, or however you say that word, and uh, it was really windy yesterday, so I noticed that the leaves don't have a whole lot on them, so I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some more of this out on the leaves. Okay, it's July 24th and I'm out here with the zucchini plants and uh, there are eggs everywhere and I've been scraping a whole bunch off. I'm gonna take a few pictures, um, but I just found some babies. Is it humane? Is it not humane? Who knows? <laughs> Probably better than poison, right? And uh, I think they die pretty quick. Uh, the best way is just scrape eggs off every couple of days. But if you take a week off, this is what you find. There are eggs everywhere. I swear gardening sucks. I've literally scraped off probably over 200 eggs 
and killed, I would say, over 50 baby squash bugs. It is like a non-stop battle. It's frustrating. So what did you do this summer? I spent my summer fighting squash bugs. I think I got them all. <laughs> yeah, right. I got a whole bunch of them. Anyways, uh, I can tell you that if you are not vigilant on the squash bugs, literally one day you'll come out and it can happen in like two days when those eggs start hatching and the plants are dead. Everything's dead. So hopefully this year <laughs> we'll win the battle. Found this beautiful creature this morning when I was out pulling weeds. We are going to let him go in the greenhouse. I don't talk about it enough, but I'm actually in one of my favorite parts of my yard and it's in the raspberry and blackberry garden. And yes, those raspberry uh, plants can be trouble, right? They're popping up in my yard. They're super annoying. I actually wouldn't really recommend them, you know, unless you have a lot of land. But anyway, I have awesome news. My blackberry plants are exploding. Picked a couple of these this morning, you can see here. Look at the size of this one right here. It's monstrous. When I was a kid, I was never a fan of blackberries, probably because they're a store-bought, but these are amazing. It's literally one of my favorite things to eat. Oh, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you how amazing these blackberry plants are doing. So you can see the flowers there. Got more here. So you can see it's gonna produce quite a bit this year, right here as well. Look at this. That is dozens of future blackberries. Got them over here as well, but check out this. You start coming in through here and you can see there's a whole bunch more that are completely ready to go. Look at that monster one right here. There's more in here. This plant over here also has some. Honestly, guys, this is what it's about. It sometimes takes years. Uh, you have tons of failures. And then all of a sudden one day you look out and one of your favorite fruits or whatever are blooming and you're having a lot of success. And uh, that's what makes it worth it. Uh, it's definitely not always easy, but um, I'm very grateful for my blackberries. Now, real quick over here, I have my uh, peach trees. These two peach trees over here are producing. And then I have a couple over there. I don't know if you guys wanna go see them. My two apple trees didn't produce anything this year. They seem to take every other year off. I don't know if that's normal, but uh, anyways, I'm sure we'll get awesome apples next year. Okay, so this little peach tree right here, it's kind of looking a little sparse. Probably need to uh, give it some help next year with some fertilizer or something. But if you look in here really close, you can see there's peaches, you know, peaches growing in here. And then if you walk over to this tree, you can see the big peach growing right in here. But if we come around here, you can see peaches. They're just popping up everywhere. Let's walk over to the other side of the yard and look at the other peach trees. But first, look at the size of that thing. I have one more. Man, that is good. Okay, so now we're on the west side of my property. You can see dead apple tree, dead apple tree. Not sure what I did wrong. But if you look over here, you can see this little peach tree is doing better than the one on the other side of the yard. And that's because this one's been here for a couple years, a little bit more established. So there's a lot of peaches on this tree, but come over to this tree and it's insane. You see all those peaches in there? It's crazy. Matter of fact, if you've never had a peach tree before, you know that I actually need to come in here and remove a bunch of these because it will become too much for this little tree to bear. But we are gonna have an awesome year of peaches here, unless the weather does something silly to us again. Anyways, let's go check out the underground greenhouse super quick, and I'm gonna bring this video to a close. Okay, so we're stepping into the greenhouse really quick. You can see the avocado tree is continuing to grow, get a little bit bigger. Here's the orange tree. There's always the disappointment of, I had dozens and dozens of little oranges growing on this tree, and then you can see here, these ones look like they're doing pretty good. They're not really, don't really seem to be growing very fast. But then you see this, clearly one that's not gonna make it. And then you look on the ground and you got another one. That is probably the most disappointing thing is you start getting your hopes up that you're gonna get some 
yummy oranges, and this happens. It happened last year too, so I have yet to get an orange off either one of these trees. Matter of fact, there's another little one, and it's getting kind of disappointing. On the other hand, the uh, grapefruit tree looks like it's gonna give me a second year of production. Look at this, I actually pushed the grapefruits up onto this arrow right there, but hopefully you can see that. I've got like five of them growing back there. And then another one, whoops, back in here. So you can see the grapefruit tree is going to give me some production this year. Got this little orange tree here. Once again, this one had a bunch of little oranges on it. We still have some on here, but uh, you know, I'm trying to get my hopes up for that as well. Then if you look at the lemon tree, this one's actually giving me the most hope besides the grapefruit tree. If you look here, you got this. Look at this nice big one right here. That's one of the biggest ones. You got a big one right back there. So a couple of, I don't know if you can see them way back over there, a couple more. So the lemons look like they're gonna produce for us also. And then looking here at the uh, lime tree, my crooked old lime tree, look at this crooked old lime tree, but if you look in here, there's a little grapefruit, a grapefruit, there's a lime here, there's one here. They're, for some reason, they're actually really hard to see, probably because they're green and the tree is green, but also for the first time ever, the lily koi plants, you can see they are going crazy. Look how much <laughs> growth we're getting off of these things. All the trees and plants seem to be doing good in here. You can see like they're growing, they're nice and tall. Then if you look over here, you can see the tomato plant and you can see got a couple little tomatoes actually growing in here. They're ready to be harvested. So we should probably pick those. Um, also, I need to come in here and top that because that's gonna hurt the bush. So that's kind of high on the priority list. Then uh, I have an experiment I've been doing. If you remember right with the pineapples, well, I've got some good news and some bad news. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you. So if you're looking here at the four pineapple tops that I planted, you can see this one right here does not look like it's going to make it. So I'm guessing that one's dead, but this one here looks amazing. Look how nice that is. It's growing new leaves there or whatever they call those things. This one over here looks like it's surviving okay. And that one over there, not so well. So hopefully we'll get at least one, but potentially two of these pineapples. Okay guys, so I have just gone to war with squash bugs yet again. I've literally killed probably two dozen adult squash bugs, big fat ones. I burned them. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I also have burned a couple dozen babies and kind of mid-sized ones. I've been scraping off eggs. I've been out here for about 45 minutes and uh, I thought, okay, I better just check one last time for eggs. And look what I saw. This is what's frustrating. I lay down on my side to look and look at all those eggs right there. And then there's more there and there. I keep asking myself, is this even worth it? I mean, I'm out here every three to four days spending 30 to 45 minutes killing squash bugs and scraping off eggs. I don't think it's worth it. Just real quick, um, for those of you who are novices like me, <laughs> when you have uh, any sort of like cucumber, zucchini, or whatever uh, squash plant, uh, you gotta keep the dead leaves like this. See all this garbage right here? I just removed that, and as I was removing it, that's when I was seeing squash bugs everywhere. I've done it multiple times. I've removed them, but I keep forgetting. You gotta be pretty vigilant on it. So I'm gonna just show you really quick what the plants look like now, and before they were just all this stuff was around the base and that makes a perfect hiding space and breeding grounds for these lame creatures. So you can see now they're really clean around the edges. I ripped off all those leaves and stuff. So there's not as much places for them to hide now. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for my monthly update for the underground greenhouse. Uh, please, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, leave a comment below. Also, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below so I can keep making videos like this. Thank you.